Hey there, so here's a free preview of my Accounting Starter Digital Course for Small Businesses. The 40 basic accounting terms. Here you go. Okay, so we're going to start with the basics, uh, the foundation of your accounting knowledge. So in module one, uh, we're going to do and run through some of the most common terms in accounting and its definitions and some examples. So let's start with the accounting period. So an accounting period is the span of time covered by a set of financial statements. So this period defines the time range over which business transactions are accumulated into financial statements. So for internal financial reporting, an accounting period is generally considered to be one month. So a few firms compile financial information into four-week increments so that they have 13 accounting periods per year. So whatever the accounting period is used should be applied consistently over time. So in our practice here in the Philippines, um, we are most of the time uh, January to December accounting period. So that's a 12-month accounting period or what you call calendar year. For some companies uh, like international companies, universities or schools, uh, they have what you call fiscal year. So for school, normally it's uh, June uh, to May. So the ending period is May. Um, and for some others, uh, they do it like from October, say October 2020 as the beginning of the first accounting period. Uh, and it's ending uh, on September 2021. Uh, and then the reporting uh, normally is uh, month by month. Uh, some is uh, quarter by quarter. So moreover, the basic point is that uh, you, you review your financial statements month by month. What is your balance sheet for uh, ending of uh, month of January? Or what's your income and expenses for the month of January? Or another perspective is um, what is your income and expenses for the span of the entire year or what you call year to date. So the next uh, term is accounts payable voucher. Basically, it's a document used by companies' accounts payable department to document an invoice received from the supplier and set up the accounts payable. So an example is that if you issue a purchase order from a supplier and the goods have been delivered to you, uh, normally it comes with an invoice from the supplier. So what you'll do is record that invoice uh, through a document called accounts payable voucher and key in the information like the nature of the transaction, uh, accounting entry, and the setup of accounts payable, and its corresponding expense. Accounts payable is the amount of money a company owes to creditors in return for goods and or services they have delivered. Trade payables or AP trade constitute the money a company owes to its vendors for inventory-related goods such as uh, business supplies, or materials that are uh, part of the inventory. While the non-trade payables constitute the money a company owes for non-inventory related goods, such as payroll, reimbursements, or payable to your employees. Accounts receivables, on the other hand, is the amount of money owed by customers or your clients to business after goods or services have been delivered. Normally, you set up your accounts receivables once you issue an invoice to your customers. Accrual is the recognition of an expense or revenue that has occurred but has not yet been paid or recorded. One example is that once you receive a bill or an invoice from your supplier um, but uh, there's a payment uh, due date uh, or the 30 day term, normally you book the invoice in the accounting period where the service or goods have been delivered, meaning you record the expense in that particular period, say for example, October of 2020, uh, the expense is recorded, but the payment should be on the following month, which is the month of November. So instead of recording the expense uh, on the day or the month it was paid, you record the expense on the day or the month or the accounting period that it has been received or delivered. Administrative expenses are expenses an organization in course that are not directly tied to a specific function, such as manufacturing, production, or sales. 
An example is like office supplies that you use to your administration, um, uh, bond papers, uh, printing of your documents that are used for HR, for example. An asset, uh, which is one of the most important terms in accounting, is a uh, type of an account or economic resource that is expected to be benefit in the future. So probable future economic benefits obtained as a result of past transactions or events. Current assets are those that are, will be converted to cash within one year. Typically, this could be cash in bank, your inventory, or your accounts receivables. Fixed assets or FA are long-term and will likely benefit to a company for more than one year such as real estate, land, or major machinery. Audit it's a professional examination of a company's financial statement by a professional accountant or group to determine that the statement has been presented fairly and prepared using GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. An internal audit is the evaluation of company's internal controls, including its corporate governance and accounting processes. Uh, these audits ensure compliance with laws and regulations and help to maintain accurate and timely financial reporting, and data collection. So basically, uh, you perform the audit so that you make sure that the reports that are, will be submitted to the management and to the government are accurate and timely. Balance sheet, uh, one of the major financial statements, uh, is a financial report that summarizes a company's financial position, which are the assets, what it owns, the liabilities, what it owes, and the owner or shareholder equity at any given time. So pretty much that's the financial position of the company and where you will see if the company is doing well and making well. A bank reconciliation is a process by which an accountant determines whether and why there is a difference between the balance shown in the bank statement and the balance of the cash account in the firm's book balance or record. So, for example, uh, all the checks that you record in your books will not necessarily uh, be cleared in the bank uh, at the period uh, that the transaction was booked. So, what you do is you get a bank statement from the bank and then compare it to your books and reconcile it if the check has cleared or not yet cleared. So, in the end, uh, you see your... Uh, actual and current cash position uh, based on the bank reconciliation report that will be generated. Bookkeeping is the process of recording financial transactions and keeping financial records. So generally, the act of recording your transactions and preparing documents in your accounting is what you call the bookkeeping. Cash flow, it's a net of cash receipts and cash disbursements relating to a particular activity during a specified accounting period. Say, for example, all the cash inflow, which are the receipts, uh, will, will be added up to your bank or cash balance. Then all the disbursements, all the checks that you prepare and disburse uh, will be a cash outflow. So in summary, the cash inflow uh, minus the cash outflow will be your net cash balance for this specified accounting period. Chart of accounts is an index of all financial accounts in the general ledger of a company. So in short, it is an organizational tool that provides a digestible breakdown of all financial transactions that a company conducted during a specific accounting period broken down into subcategories. Examples are cash, accounts receivables, fixed assets, Accounts payable, capital stock, your income, your rent expenses, administrative expenses like salaries and wages, and whatnot. A check voucher, similar to your accounts payable voucher, is a document um, which is a combination of a check and a voucher, also known as a remittance advice, which includes pertinent information about the parties to the transaction thus creates an auditable paper trail about the check's payment. Cost accounting uh, is the procedure used for rationally classifying, recording, and allocating current or predicted costs 
that relate to a certain product or production process. So basically, the computation of your material cost, your labor cost, and overhead during the production of your finished goods uh, is considered the process of cost accounting. Cost of goods sold. So it's a figure representing the cost of buying raw materials and producing finished goods. So relevant to the term cost accounting or cost accounting procedures, cost of goods sold is the actual sum or the result of your cost accounting. Credit or CR is an accounting entry that may either decrease assets or increase liabilities and equity on the company's balance sheet depending on the transaction. When using the double entry or the what you call accounting journal entries, um, there will be two recorded entries for every transaction, a debit and a credit. So the credit again is a either decrease of assets or increase in liabilities and equity. Debit, on the other hand, or what you call DR, is an accounting entry when, where there is either an increase in asset or a decrease in liabilities on company's balance sheet. So later on, we're going to be discussing the details of that uh, in our one of our modules. Depreciation is an expense allowance made for wear and tear of an asset over its estimated useful life. So pretty much when you acquire an asset like a vehicle, um, you won't or you don't record it as an expense in an accounting period. So what you do is record expense based on its wear and tear and usage depending on in, uh, its estimated useful life. Disbursement is basically a payment by cash or check. This is normally supported by a check voucher discussed earlier and the supplier invoice as its source document. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization is a measure of a company's overall financial performance. So for example, um, your top line here, rev or revenue is 100,000 and you have an operating expenses of about 60,000, then your EBITDA is, uh, shall be 40,000. It says here that it's before the depreciation, amortization, and other expenses like taxes and amortization. So if you less this information, uh, the bottom line shall be your net income. But if you want to analyze your financial performance before the depreciation and the amortization, then that's what you call your EBITDA. Equity is a residual interest in the assets of an entity that remains after deducting its liabilities. Some uh, call it as net worth. So also it's the amount of a business total assets less total liabilities. It's the, the third section of a balance sheet. And then the other two being assets and liabilities. GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles refers to a common set of accounting principles standards and procedures issued by Financial Accounting Standard Board. So basically, uh, it's a standard across all companies in terms of uh, preparing their financial statements like balance sheet or income statement. General ledger is like the collection of all the records or transactions of your assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. Uh, so basically, each account in your chart of accounts uh, shall have a general ledger or record of its movement, uh, basically the increase or decrease of its balance. For example, if you have an asset like a cash, so if you receive a receipt of 10000 uh, on January 1, then, then the disbursement in uh, January 2, then in your general ledger, so the ending balance is 3,000. Uh, so pretty much the, this type of report uh, is called your ledger or general ledger. Gross profit will appear on a company's income statement and can be calculated by subtracting the cost of goods sold or what you call the direct cost from revenue or sales. These figures can be found on a company's income statement. For in this example, the revenue is your 100000 the cost of goods sold or direct cost is 60000 and the difference 
will be called the gross profit. And then with what we have discussed earlier, less the operating expenses shall be called the EBITDA. Income tax is a type of tax the government imposes on income generated by businesses and individuals within their jurisdiction. By law, the taxpayers must file an income tax return or ITR annually to determine their tax obligations. So no, in the Philippines, normally it's every April 15, uh, but uh, there's also a quarterly uh, filing of the ITR. So to compute for the income tax uh, would be your net income multiplied by the percentage of the current uh, income tax rate. And that will be your payable to the government or the BIR. Inventory is the term for the goods available for sale and raw materials used to produce goods available for sale. So inventory represents one of the most important assets of a business because the turnover of inventory represents one of the primary sources of revenue generation and subsequent earnings for the company shareholders. So pretty much we book the inventory every time we acquire or purchase goods from the suppliers for your merchandise or raw materials to produce the finished goods. So those record or the value of that inventory will depend on the uh, purchase cost uh, from the supplier. The journal entry or accounting entry or sometimes called the double entry or is a kind of notation in the general ledger to update balances. It records a single transaction. So in this example, uh, there's a debit and the credit. So this accounting entry should always be in balance, meaning the debit shall always be equal to the total credit. And uh, this accounting entry, uh, later on, uh, I will discuss that in the next modules uh, of how it affects to the financial statements or the balances in your chart of accounts. Labor cost is the sum of all the wages paid to employees as well as the cost of employee benefits and payroll taxes paid by an employer. The cost of labor, uh, which is computed uh, in the cost accounting method, is broken into direct and indirect overhead costs. So direct costs include wages for the employees that produce a product, including workers of an assembly line, while indirect costs are associated with support labor, such as employees who maintain factory equip equipment. Liability or debts or obligations owed by one entity, the debtor, to another entity, the creditor. It's payable in money, goods, or services. So some examples of liability is uh, accounts payable, notes payable, uh, loans payable, and salary payable. Net income, also called as net earnings, is calculated as sales minus cost of goods sold, selling, general administrative expenses, and all the other expenses. It is useful uh, for investors to assess how much revenue exceeds the expenses of an organization and shows if the company is profiting or at loss. So again, an example, um, the net income is your bottom line here. Operating expenses uh, is an expense a business incurs through its normal business operations. Commonly, it's uh, abbreviated as OPEX, uh, including rent, equipment, inventory costs, marketing expenses, uh, insurance, and uh, funds allocated for research and development. One of the typical responsibilities that management must contend with, with its determining how to reduce operating expenses without significantly affecting a firm's ability to comp with its competitors. Revenue, uh, it is the income generated from normal business operations and includes discounts and deductions for return merchandise. It is a top line or gross income figure from which costs are subtracted to determine the net income. So for example, every time you make a sale, the, so the gross amount of that sale uh, less the corresponding VAT should, shall be recorded as your revenue. At times, uh, revenue is um, accrued or recognized uh, when you deliver the goods and uh, in a cash basis, 
um, accounting, it is recorded uh, during the collection of your sales or the cash collection. So it's, so it's commonly uh, practiced by service companies. Sales invoice uh, is a timestamp commercial document that itemizes and records a transaction between a buyer and a seller. So if goods or services were purchased on credit, the invoice usually specifies the terms of the deal and provides information on the available methods of payment. So types of invoices may include a paper receipt, a bill of sale, a debit note, a sales invoice, or online electronic record. So in your case, if you deliver goods, you issue an invoice to your customer or a billing statement if you're a service company. Source document is an original record that contains the detail that supports or substantiates a transaction that will be or has been entered into an accounting system. So in the past, source documents were printed on paper. So today, the source documents may be an electronic record. So in our earlier term, so every time you receive an invoice from your supplier to record your accounts payable, so the invoice from the supplier is your source document. So in practice, right now, especially with the computerized accounting, it is normally scanned and then attached to the accounting transaction uh, to, to record the electronic document. Deferred revenue is the money received by an individual or company for a service or product that has yet to be provided or delivered. It can be thought of as a prepayment, or in the Philippines sometimes called or commonly called as a down payment or an advance payment, for the goods or services that a person or company is expected to supply to the purchaser at a later date. As a result of this prepayment or advance payment, the seller has a liability equal to the revenue earned until the good or service is delivered. VAT or value added tax, so it's a consumption of tax le levied on the value added to a product at each stage of its manufacturing cycle, as well as the time of purchase by the ultimate consumer. So to compute for the value added tax here in the Philippines, so the product net price, for example, it's 10000 uh, then you add the VAT, which is 12% of the net price, uh, equivalent to 1200 in this case. So the product gross price shall be 11200 So normally in the Philippines, it is mandated that you always put uh, the gross or the VAT in your invoice to indicate that there's a VAT of 12% and uh, added to the net price. Withholding tax compensation is the amount of an employee's pay withheld by the employer and sent directly to the government or BIR as partial payment of income tax. So in this case, if the employee, employee pay is 50000 for the per current cutoff or a month, then uh, it, you, you less the corresponding withholding tax based on the BIR tax matrix, which for example in this case is 2-5 then the, the only pay that you will issue to your employee is 47500 and then the 2500 shall be remitted to the BAR uh, in the next period. Withholding tax expanded, on the other hand, is the amount due to supplier withheld by the buyer or sent directly to the government as partial payment of income tax. So in this case, if the supplier issues an invoice worth 50000 then the withholding tax for goods normally is 1%. So you withhold the 500 from your supplier and just issue a payment of 49,500 to your uh, supplier. Then the 500 shall be remitted to the government or the BIR in the next accounting period. So there you go. So we have uh, finished uh, 40 basic accounting terms, um, which will be your foundation in the next coming modules. So thank you so much for your patience and uh, see you in the next video.